I think I may be coming down with the flu. Okay. I've been having some abdominal pain and diarrhea. I've had a fever and a headache, and I've been dizzy a lot. Okay, well, we're going to do a physical examination for you, just because you said you had some abdominal pain. You just want to lay back, see if you have any tenderness. Is right here okay? Yep, no pain. Here? Mm-hmm. Okay, here? I'm good. Right here? Uh, yeah, right there is very tender. Okay, so that's your liver, which means you have some hepatomegaly going on. Um, just for your medical history, have you ever been, have you been traveling recently or anything like that? I have. I just spent the past few months in Egypt. Okay, so have you eaten anything weird that you know of? Nothing unusual. Remember swimming in any bodies of water or anything like that? Yes, I went swimming a few times in a lake. Okay, well, since Egypt is an endemic area and very high risk for parasites, um, I'm actually not a parasitologist, but I did take medical parasitology in my undergrad with Dr. C Dr. Christopher Lance, and he <laughs> taught me to always check for it. So we're just going to do a blood sample and a fecal sample um, and see if you've got anything going on. Okay, okay great. All right, thanks. Thank you. After receiving the fecal sample, we t in the lab we did a direct smear and looked at the sample under the microscope and found Schistosoma manzoni eggs. And you can tell that it's the species because of the lateral spine on the egg. Hello, Julia. Hi. So we just got your results back from the lab. Um, your blood test indicated eosinophilia and your fecal sample did have eggs in it. Um, the eggs were identified as a parasite called Schistosoma manzoni. Yikes, what is that? Um, I actually brought a video with me so that you could watch it and educate yourself on it. Um, thankfully, it's easily cured, so I'll get back to you. Okay. You used to say, live and let live. You know you did, you know you did, you know you did. First, embryonated eggs are deposited into fresh water with human feces. Eggs hatch and release mobile myrcidium, which then penetrate the biomphalaria snail, which is the intermediate host, invading its lymph spaces and then its hepatopancreas. Then comes the production of sporocysts, which gives rise to daughter sporocysts, producing sicariae, which is infectious stage for humans. Sicariae exit the snail, accumulate to the surface of the water, and seek a definitive host. The sicariae penetrate human skin, usually through the hair follicle. Within the dermal layer of the skin, sicariae shed their forked tails and transform into the schistosomulae fates. After roughly two days, the schistosomulae migrate through the bloodstream to the capillaries of the lung, where they remain for several more days. In the lungs, immature worms acquire the ability to incorporate host serum proteins onto their tegumental surface as camouflage. The camouflage can convince the leukocytes that the worm is enabling itself to survive inside the host. The worm also has a beta-2 microglobulin-like cell that confuses immune defense cells, particularly macrophages, in their attempt to recognize parasite antigens. Schistosomulae migrate from the lungs to the liver via the bloodstream where they mature into adult worms. Within the liver, the adult worms mate. Females lay within the gynecophoral canal of the male and remain there for the duration of their lives. They then migrate into the mesenteric circulation where they live in the inferior mesenteric veins that drain the intestines. Adult females lay roughly 300 embryonated eggs per day that circulate to the liver via portal circulation and around 50% enter surrounding connective tissue and collect in the submucosa and then enter the lumen of the small intestine. Life cycle is completed when the eggs exit the host with the feces. Say live and let die. Hi, Julia. Hi. Okay, so that was interesting. So you said it's easily cured. What do I do now? I actually brought you a single dose of praziquantil. Um, you just take that and you should shed all of your parasites. Great. I'll see you in a few weeks for checkup. Okay, thank you.
This is a PSA to our viewers. These are some preventative me methods to avoid schistosomiasis. Uh, number one, avoid contact with infested fresh water. Um, we, would, we also can eradicate snail vectors with molluscicides. Um, educate the public, have sanitation of fresh water supplies, and do chemotherapy with prezoquantil and oxymenequin.